Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman and Spawn 2 pack. Now, this has been a long time coming. Many, many years ago, they did a Batman and Spawn and a Spawn Batman comic, I believe, in like the late 90s. And recently, they kind of revisited that. They had another Batman and Spawn crossover comic. And it seemed like this 2 pack was a no brainer. McFarlane has the rights to DC figures and Spawn figures, and he's good at both those things. Surprised it took him this long to make one. I believe this pack is based off the recent Batman Spawn comic, and I would love one based off the original as well. I ordered this thing from the McFarland Toy Store, and it finally arrived today. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see, age 12 plus, DC Multiverse, Batman and Spawn, based off comics by Todd McFarlane. Got the Spawn logo, Batman logo. Here they are in the package. Batman has a total of four hands, a Batarang. Spawn has a large sword. They both have a display stand and a collector's card, and then there's a larger display stand for both of them. One side of the package, Batman and Spawn, based off comics by Todd McFarlane. Other side, Batman and Spawn. At the bottom, we have a bunch of credits, and there is a barcode, in case that helps anybody. And at the back side, here are the two of them posed up. So with no further ado, let's open it up. And of course, I did get two of these sets. One of which to open and enjoy, and the other one to keep unopen in my complete Batman related unopened action figure collection. Now, before we dig into the figures, let's talk about the Batman Spawn comic. So, this is a newer comic. Here's the copy Batman Spawn, McFarlane, Capullo, McCaig. You can see the Batman logo, the Spawn logo at the top. This is specifically what this two pack is based off of. This is the main cover. Of course, I have many cover variants. Here's one cover variant, Batman, on top of Spawn. Here's another cover variant, different artists. All looks fantastic. Here's another cover variant, Batman and Spawn. Those long, exaggerated capes. Another cover variant, Batman and Spawn in the graveyard. Another cover variant, large Batman head, Spawn mask off. Another cover variant, Spawn, all his chains, Batman. Another cover variant, Batman here, with the Spawn in the background, city background. Another cover variant, we have these enormous McFarlane style capes. Look at that. And another cover variant, Batman and Spawn. Here is a blank cover variant. And then here is sort of a Transparent cover variant. You can see Spawn on the first half, Batman on the second half. Pretty nice effect. And then beyond that, we have the original Spawn and Batman comic and the original Batman and Spawn comic. Now let's talk about the packaging. Now the outside of the package is just like every other McFarland DC Multiverse 2 pack, but this cardboard insert here, I thought it was pretty cool. For those that are familiar with the McFarland DC Multiverse figures, you've seen this package time and time again. And this is what it looks like on the inside of the spawn figures. And for this one, it's half and half. Thought that was very appropriate. All right. Now that these figures are out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. These figures look great so far. Batman has an angry expression, which, eh, I prefer more of a vanilla expression. But the figure itself looks pretty cool, stylized. I believe Batman here is based off the Hush and Three Jokers body. And I think the spawn figure is based off the spawn with throne. But we'll check that out in great detail in the video. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of the figures individually. We'll check out their accessories, height, and articulation, and we'll compare them with a bunch of other Batman and Spawn figures. So, hope you guys enjoy this video, and let's start off with the man himself, Batman. Now before we look at just Batman, let's check out their shared accessory. There's a display piece here with a cardboard background. Now the display piece... It's sort of this rubble of ruins. We have skulls all over the place in here. It looks pretty cool. Definitely a little bit more spawnish than Batman. And has an insert here where you can put the cardboard thing into. Pretty hollow and basic. This would be fantastic for a Terminator figure set. Then we have this cardboard insert. Spawn, Batman. Get it inside. And you have a little display for your figures, which is cool, but honestly, it's not really wide enough for action figure photography. Might be cool on the shelf if you're in that sort of thing. Personally, I'm not. This would go with either my Predators or Terminator figures, and then this will just go on the shelf with the comics. 
So here's Batman. Figure looks pretty good. He's got the long pointed ears. He's got the thin, sort of spiky fins coming off his forearms. Long flowing cape, dark colors, yellow oval bat signal. Still looks like that old school capsule utility belt. He comes with two alternate hands, totally fill or interchangeable hands, a large batarang, display stand, and a collector's card. Before we take a look at those, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So this Batman is based off the three Jokers year two hush Batman body, which is a large Batman figure, a little bit too large in my opinion, but I was hoping that would be the figure that used the spawn Batman two pack because most of the spawn figures are pretty big and you need a bad Batman to be able to go up against him. So let's check him out. So the figure is very stylized. First of all, he's got the angry expression and personally I'd rather have a vanilla expression on my Batman figure so I can use him in more scenarios than just angry fighting. But that's okay. It does look pretty good. A little bit of sort of sculpt, like where the chin is. When you get the shadow on it right, it almost looks like he has sort of scars on his face, but that's not what's going on. Cheeks a little bit sunken in, mouth open, angry expression, long pointed ears. He's got those little sort of spikes on his shoulders, very stylized. Batman drawn that way quite a bit. Yellow oval on the bat symbol. He's got that very familiar hush torso. You can see the sculpt in his suit. It's a very large, bulky Batman figure. Spiky fins on the forearms. Two larger gripping hands. Double jointed knees, double jointed elbows. Very wide flowing cape. Very dark colored Batman. We don't get too many of these, so it's nice to have one to add to the mix. Now this Batman seems pretty stylized, and that's fine. I prefer a more vanilla, standard looking Batman. But we're starting to get several of those, so it's cool to have a bunch of different takes and looks. Now looking at the different Spawn Batman cover variants that I have, to me, this figure looks like it's based off the J. Scott Campbell art. This is the cover variant. You can see Batman here, long ears, dark suit, little things above the shoulders. Yeah, the belt and the bat signal are a little bit different, but this is really what I see in this figure. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. He has an angry expression, and I prefer a normal expression, but doesn't look bad. I can see this Batman angry, beating the pulp out of somebody. The figure as a whole is just very stylized, and that goes with the entire theme with this Batman Spawn 2-pack. It was always a lot of style. Batman, Spawn, crossover. And I've always had a problem with this guy's legs, seeing as how he's pretty much the same as the year 2 Batman. Now, look at the knees. This one is kind of sticking outward. This one is kind of sticking forward, maybe a little bit that way. And my immediate thought is kind of fix it so the knees look the same, but then you have this piece here that's sort of bulging out of the hip. That looks horrible, so I want to fix that, put that back. But then his leg is sort of pointing the other direction. It's the only way to make him... Either he looks bad here, or he looks bad here. It's always been a problem with the year two Batman, and it's exactly the same on this guy. We have the exact same thing going on with both this Batman and the year two Batman. Look at his right knee, how it's pointing inward. It was even so bad on this Batman that I kept fixing it. His leg kept moving. It actually even ripped some of his shorts back there. Very disappointing execution there. Looks good, but has some issues, that's for sure. And here's the figure broken down as far as he can go with all of his removable parts detached. Now let's check out his accessories. Let's start off the boring stuff. Here's his display stand. We've seen it a million times before. Typically a farther stand. It's a black circle, very thin. Very basic, but it definitely gets the job done. Now let's check out his collector's card. As you can see, it's an image of Batman. Batman? It's not even the same sort of artwork that this action figure is based off of. Backside, there is a description. If you want to read that, go ahead and pause now. Now let's check out his hands. He has a total of four of them. Two left hands and two right hands. And this is just like the year two Batman. They were lazy. You can see the back of the hands. These open ones, it's totally smooth. And then these fisted hands, they're sort of grooved like he has different kind of gloves on. They did the exact same thing with the year two Batman, as I recall. Lazy and disappointing, because I'm sure McFarland has appropriate hands out there they could have used. Here he is with his first pair of hands. These are the hands he came with in the package. They're pretty large hands. I wouldn't exactly call them gripping hands. I would call them maybe grabbing, choking, or throwing hands. And here's his other pair of hands. His right hand is a traditional gripping hand. His left hand is a fisted hand. Now let's look at his batarang. The batarang, well, it's right shape, but damn, this thing is thick. 
I'm almost 100% sure it's the same Batarang that came with the Batman the Eight right Series Batman. And that wasn't a very good Batarang. At least the Hush Batman is a really big Batman, so it's a big Batarang for a big Batman. Here's this Batman holding and getting ready to throw his Batarang. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height, and he's a big boy. From bottom to the top of his head, standing right about 7.4, 7.5 inches tall, which could translate to just under 19 centimeters. And if you go to the top of the ears, about 7.8 inches tall. Now for his articulation, starting with his head, of course, you can rotate from side to side. You can look up and down about that much. Can tilt his head from one side to the other. His head and neck is one solid piece. The articulation is at the bottom there. I'm not really a fan of that. I prefer when the neck is attached to the body, and then you can move the head here, do easier head swaps. He's got little spike things above his shoulders. Shoulders, on a ball joint, goes up about 90 degrees. The cape's going to obstruct it from going any further than that. Up, down, around. He's got a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest area. Increase the range of motion and covering the large gap that would be there. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows. They go all the way in. His wrist can rotate and it's hinged. They're on the old style ball joints. A little bit less attractive than the current style but finally uses. His torso, he's got a ball joint, rotate around, forward and back. Another one is waist, rotate around, forward and back. Between the two, pretty good range of motion at the torso area. My waist is pretty tight, so I'm getting a little more out of the torso. Legs, complete as splits, not a ball joint, McFarland style hip joints. Rotation is minimal. They go forward, about that far, back, not much. Double joint knees below that. And then his ankle here, forward and back, tilt rock, rotate, and of course, to articulation. Now let's check him out. Next is one of the McFarland DC Multiverse Batman figures. Here he is, next to the year two Batman. These figures are pretty much exactly the same. Different paint job, different cape, different head. That's it. And I feel like McFarlane was kind of too lazy to actually fully capture the artwork they were going for as they use the exact same parts as the year two. They didn't fix the bat symbol on the chest or the utility belt. Now, figures are exactly the same. I know I talked about that knee issue earlier, the leg. I do not know why it is made that way. It's just horrible. Beyond that, it's a fantastic looking Batman figure. I like how it's stylized. This one is a much more regular, normal looking Batman. I mean, this is sort of some of Batman's stylized signature stuff. Little points on the shoulders with a cape. Long flowing cape. Long ears. Angry face. Both great figures. Both totally different sort of inspirations and artwork. Both very heavily influenced by Todd McFarlane. Here he is. Next to the three Jokers Batman, this is the second Batman figure to use the same body with some minor alterations. And here he is, next to the Hush Batman, this is the third type of Batman figure to use this body. Here are all the different McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman figures that have used this Year 2, Hush, and Three Jokers body so far. We have the two different variants of the Three Jokers Batman, Vampire Batman, Batman Spawn, Year 2 Batman, Two Faces Batman, and then both versions of the Batman Hush. Now, they're not even done using this body. There's an upcoming black and gray Hush Batman single release with a regular expression utilizing this body yet again for the ninth time. Body's not bad, but frankly, it's just too damn big. Don't get me wrong, I like my Batman to be big, imposing, intimidating, bigger than the people around him, being able to beat people up, but he shouldn't be a giant. This Batman is almost 7.5 inches tall. The line is a seven inch scale. Batman, Bruce Wayne is, I don't know, six foot two in the comics. So, in a seven inch scale line, figures that are six foot tall should be 7.0 inches. So, Batman should be, I don't know, 7.1, maybe 7.2 inches tall. 7.4, 7.5, it just makes him a little too big. That wouldn't be a problem if the figures were all consistent around this seven and a half inch scale, but they're not. A lot of the figures look like shrimps compared to him, and the whole sort of line is out of whack at this point. It's almost like McFarlane has three different scales, small, medium, and large, and this guy is definitely on the large end of things. Great looking figures. Just wish they were like 0.2 inches smaller. Yes, that makes a big difference, and yes, that's what she said. Now let's check them out. Next is one of their McFarlane Decent Multiverse Batman figures. 
Like I said, he's on sort of the taller side of things. Here he is, next to several older McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman figures. These were all from the comics. Then, with even more McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman figures. These are also from the comics. And here he is, with several more Batman figures. These are from different various forms of media. Now let's take a look at Spawn. This is a really nice Spawn figure. I would hate to say if the best McFarlane Spawn figure in modern times that they've made is from the Batman vs Spawn 2 pack. That would be kind of a shame for the Spawn line. Still, happy to have this figure. He looks great. He comes with a display stand, collector's card, and then a giant sword. And I don't even think he used the sword in this comic. That being said, let's take a look at him. So, once again, stylized, you can see his cape, it's long, it's sort of flowing, this top part here. Looks good, definitely reminds me of the Todd McFarlane art from back in the day. Spawn's face, pretty normal, black with a sort of Spawn logo, white wrapped around his eyes. He's got a chain between his cape, chain around his belt. Double ball joints in the torso, looks like. Double jointed elbows, double jointed knees, signature, larger armor on one side than the other. Cape itself, ton at the bottom here that's going to really make it easy to stand this guy up. It looks good, it's big, it's textured, very long, bulky, extra piece on the side. That sort of weird, stylized McFarland design. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Looks good, traditional spawn. Now for his accessories. He has a similar display stand as Batman, except the difference is this one has a spawn logo on it. And then his collector's card. As you can see, it's an image of spawn. Spawn. Backside, there's a description. If you want to read that, pause now. Now let's check out a sword. It is giant. It's very odd shaped. Very sort of blocky, square shaped. You see the top here, it's got a little cutout here, spike part here. It's got a lot of sort of dents and scratches, like it's been through a lot. It has kind of the Spawn logo. The handle looks like it has a red wrap around it. Sculpting is very nice on this thing. You can see the lights are shining off it. Very odd looking sword though. Here's Spawn holding that sword. He can hold it with either one hand or with two. Now let's check out his height, from bottom to the top of his head, standing at about 7.2 inches tall, which can translate to just over 18 centimeters. Now for his articulation, starting with his head, he can rotate from side to side, he can look up and down about that much, he can tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders on a ball joint, cape obstructs it quite a bit, the cape is very thick, very tough, you can't just sort of push it out of the way exactly. His arm only goes out about that far. Other side, it's also quite limited from the cape, at least as far as going out. It goes up about that much till the cape stops it. It is a ball joint. There is a butterfly joint between the shoulder and chest area. Increase the motion, cover a large gap. But a little rough to see and utilize all that stuff with the cape. Bicep cut. Double jointed elbows. His wrist. Can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. Ball joint his torso, rotate around, forward and back, another one in his waist, rotate around, forward and back. Pretty good range of motion between the two, a little more out of the torso than the waist on him. Legs, complete as the splits, the chains move out of the way. Not a ball joint, McFarland style hip joints. Rotation, it's decent. Legs go forward that much, back a little bit. Double jointed knees. And his ankle here, can't really see that one very good, but forward and back, rotate, tilt, rock, and of course, to articulation. And then I was curious which spawn figure this spawn was based off of, and like I suspected, it's the exact same figure as the throne spawn. And the funny thing is, this spawn throne is the only actual Al Simmons spawn they made in their spawn line. All their other spawn figures were in the Mortal Kombat line. Just interesting observation, but it's 100% the same. The legs, the diaper piece, the chains, the torso, the arms, everything except for the cape. 100% the same, and I'll tell you, 
this might be the best spawn figure in the entire McFarlane collection. Between Mortal Kombat, their spawn line, now this DC line, subline, spawn, whatever. Pretty freaking nice. I like the cape. I like the figure. The cape does sort of hinder some articulation, but it looks so good. Now this throne spawn. He doesn't get to be the best spawn because it only comes with part of his cape. He should have had an alternate rest of the cape. Then, here he is, next to the Mortal Kombat 11 Shadow of Spawn spawn. I would say, before the Spawn 2-pack, this would be my favorite modern spawn figure that McFarlane has done. And it's funny, because it was in the Mortal Kombat 11 line, not in the actual spawn line. And then, this new spawn, that appears to be dethroning him, is really part of the DC Multiverse line, also not part of the spawn line. I'm not sure why, but they have made far too few actual Al Simmons spawn figures in their spawn line. Now, I personally don't have the Kickstarter, so I can't speak to if it's better or not. And here he is, next to the original Mortal Kombat 11 spawn. Also a fantastic figure, but he's been beaten a couple times since then. Still, he's the one that started the new wave of spawn figures. Here are essentially the best four modern McFarlane spawn figures out there. And here he is, with all the different variations of the Mortal Kombat 11 spawn. Here's Batman taking on Spawn in front of some Batman and Spawn cover variants. And here's a look at the same pose, but this one's in a Gotham Cemetery. Now let's check them out. Next is some other action figures, starting off with some other McFarland figures. But first, look at the two of these guys. Spawn's a pretty big figure, and Batman is even bigger. I don't think that's necessarily accurate, but it kind of makes you feel good. Batman looks more badass than Spawn, at least more intimidating. I'll tell you. I'd say yes, it is my favorite modern McFarlane Spawn figure, but not my favorite modern McFarlane Batman figure. He is pretty nice, though. Here they are, next to the most recent Spawn wave. We have Sin, Monolith, and Medieval Spawn. Now let's check them out. Next to some other recently released McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. Here they are, next to the Abyss. The Abyss is the only figure I have from the Collector's Edition wave so far. I should get the others maybe tomorrow. There are plenty of chase variants of all three of these figures. Abyss, Alan Scott, Green Lantern, and Superman. If anybody happens to get one and is willing to sell it, drop me a line in the comments below. I'm sure we can work something out. And just look at this Batman's cape. It is so wide, it's hard to stand up next to other action figures. He does not play well with others. And here they are, next to the Dark Knight Trilogy, Gold Label, San Diego Comic Con exclusive figures. We have Joker as a bank robber thug, Bane with his coat, and then Joker as he's seen through the sonar vision of Batman's eyes. Then, next to some more San Diego Comic-Con exclusive figures, we have the Page Puncher Sketch Mr. Freeze, the 30th Anniversary Batman from Nightfall, the 85th Anniversary Superman, and the Alan Scott Dread Lantern. And now, next to the Blue Beetle movie wave, we have the regular Blue Beetle, Carapace, and the Battle Mode Blue Beetle. Here they are, next to some McFarland Toy Store exclusive gold label figures, we have the Dick Grayson Robin, Superman is Unchained Armor, the Patina variant, Catman, and Cop Rainer Blue Lantern. Next, let's check them out with some Target exclusive figures. Here they are, next to the Superman vs. Doomsday 2-pack. And here they are, next to some Target exclusive Joker Eyes figures. Then, with some more Target exclusive figures, we have the Impulse Warp Flash, Sinestro Core Batman, Ted Cord Blue Beetle, and Dead Man. And now, with the Target exclusive Flashpoint Wave, Aquaman, Project Superman, and Flash. Here they are, next to the Injustice 2 3-pack, Batman, Supergirl, and Dr. Fate. Here they are, next to some recent Walmart exclusive gold label figures. We have the Vampire, Joker, Batman, and Superman, Captain Atom, Eradicator, and Beast Boy. And here they are, next to most recent McFarland DC Multiverse 2 pack. This is the Goofy Head Sculpt Superman vs. Ultraman 2 pack. Then, next to most recent Batman Wave, we have the Batman Incorporated Batwing, Nightfall Batman, and Batman Reborn, Two Faces Batman. And now, next to the Big Bat Toy Store exclusive Black and White Accent Superman and Flash. And finally, next to the fifth wave of Page Punchers, this is a Batman-themed wave, Fighting the Frozen. We have Batman, Robin, Batgirl, and Mr. Freeze. There's a plan of Chase variant of Batgirl out there, and I'm on the hunt for her. Now let's check them out. Next to some action figures from different various companies, so we can see how they fit in, both scale and style-wise. In case you don't know which lines you can mix them with, since they're McFarland toys, they're typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect, and work way smaller, and I'm going to include as many Batman figures I can during these comparisons. Since we already checked them out, next to plenty of other McFarland Batman figures, here he is, next to some more McFarland toys. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all for McFarland toys, all 7-inch scale. 
then with some more McFarland toys. These are from different various video game properties. And now with some Jack specific wrestling figures. And here they are. Next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. Here's Batman and Spawn. Next to a cup of water. Then next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles Batman figures. And here they are. Standing with some NECA Batman figures. Then with some Mattel wrestling figures. And now with some Chazwares AEW wrestlers. And here they are. Next is some Mesco 112 Collected Batman figures. Then with some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse Batman figures. And here they are with some Mafex figures. Then with some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here they are. Next is some SH Figure Arts Batman figures. And finally with some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. So overall, it's a very nice two pack. The Batman and Bond crossover from 20 years ago and from recently are both very cool events. Now, let's talk about the Spawn figure first. Honestly, I'm going to say I think it's my favorite McFarlane Spawn figure. Really, the only thing to complain about is a little bit of the hindrance of the articulation in the shoulders from his cape. But visually, he is very pleasing. He's gorgeous. I'd say he is the best Spawn in my opinion. Now, on to Batman. I like the figure. I think it's very cool. It's stylized, and they almost achieved what they were going for. But here are the problems. First of all, I'm not fond of the head and neck be one piece, but I've long since accepted that. Not a big deal. So they tried to go for it looked like the Campbell artwork, but they got everything except they needed a different bat symbol on the chest without the oval and a different belt. They were just lazy and decided not to make them or add them. In addition to that, it's on the old year two body. That body is very dated. It has a ball wrist and ankle joints. He has trouble standing, he's very top heavy, his cape is very heavy, his cape is very wide, it's very hard to stand up around other action figures, he has a problem with his leg, did I mention the body is very old, very dated, lazy reuse, it's also too big, I mean looking next to Spawn, Spawn's a big badass motherfucker, and then Batman is usually pretty lean, so scaling issues here as well. Even with all of those complaints about Batman, I still like him. Oh, did I mention I'm not a fan of the angry expression? Although this one is not too bad, but I prefer a more vanilla Batman. That way you can use him in all kinds of scenarios. Standing in the Batcave, fighting villains, walking down the street, driving the Batmobile. This guy is really just good for fighting. Even with all those problems, I do like this Batman. He's unique, he's stylized, little tips on the shoulders, long ears, etc. Dark suit. It all looks very good. And I do prefer a more normal vanilla Batman, but we've got several of those lately, and so it's kind of cool to get some of these as well. Still, he has a lot of problems. If I were to rate these figures, God, I'm going to give Spawn an 8.5 out of 10. Gorgeous looking figure. Just a little bit of articulation issues to prevent him from doing some of the things he wants Spawn to be able to do. And then Batman here. Man, boy, do I want to give this guy an 8, but I think he's going to get a 6 just because he has so many problems. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.